Well, hello everybody and welcome to the CAD tutorial channel. This is a uh, part two in our Newton's Cradle series for SolidWorks. So in this video, we're gonna actually make the Newton's Cradle function as it was intended for in real life. And uh, that in the last video I left you off where we created the parts and we created this assembly file and we took care of most of the mating constraints to make this function. Now, since we uh, last uh, talked in that video, I want to talk about just a few tiny minor changes that I needed to make to get this to work properly. The first uh, change or addition I've added since the last video is added an di additional mate in here. And I'm going to pull up the ball part file and show you. And what I did is I threw in an axis across our two points, point to point up here, and threw that axis in up there. Um, and what that is for is I came and added a additional mate in here uh, for this axis that runs here, and it's going to be parallel to the plane down here that we set up to stage these balls. So to recap, this point is on the axis and the support. This point is on the axis and the support. So that gives us two mates. Then we have this point, which is uh, mated to that plane down there. And same with all the rest of them. And then we have a fourth and a new constraint added with that axis being parallel to this plane here. As I went through the testing on this, I found that I was getting some dancing or walking uh, across here from the side view that was causing uh, my results not to be what I was anticipating. So if you could go ahead and take care of that additional mate, you'll be right up to where we are in this video here. The next thing that we need to do before we move further is in theory we can run these balls to the exact size of the distance between those planes which is one inch um, i found that the results were a little wonky doing that and so most real life examples of this the balls are slightly smaller than that giving us a little space in between so i've changed the uh, diameter down to uh, 0.49 uh, or the, the, excuse me, the radius down to 0.498 on uh, the revolution to make these balls. So if we come to a side view, we'll see that we have just a tiny bit of space in between them. That little space gives us a little bit better uh, breathing room uh, for the calculations to take place. All right. Once we get through all that, I've taken care of all the heavy lifting, and uh, this should be fairly simple. Um, it was, again, a little more challenging than I anticipated, but we got it working, and uh, that's what we're, we're hoping for here. All right, so now that our model is assembled and, and uh, we have everything mated, we have all the degrees of freedom that we're hoping for, so each of these balls will uh, rotate. Uh, along this axis up here, so we're in good shape. It's now time to go ahead and move into simulating this out. So I'm going to come up here to the top and go to SolidWorks Add-ons and add the SolidWorks Motion tab. And then I've already done this a few times uh, with messing around with it, so I'm going to just go ahead and make a new motion study down here at the bottom. All right, so this will be once you hit the motion buddy, uh, motion study right here, you'll be in one by default. So I've done it a few times, and, and so I'm in number four here. Once I'm there, I'm going to change from animation right up in here to motion analysis. And uh, we're ready to get going, and there's just a few things that we need to take care of. The first is gravity. So I'm going to go ahead and add the gravity button. I'm going to use a vector just a straight edge in here like that one. My arrow is going up, so I'll go ahead and flip that. And now gravity is taken care of. 
I'm going to shorten this video down to just four seconds as well. We're going to be doing a lot of math with it. We don't need it to go too long. And the next thing is I need to make a contact with all of these so that they interact. I've tried this a variety of different ways. And uh, the best results I got was just using a, a standard 3D contact, which is a solid body contact. And I can do that in a group, picking all the pieces together that are going to interact with one another. I'm going to turn material off, and I'm going to turn friction off, and I'm going to come down here to elastic properties and change it to restitution. And I'm going to set that value to 1. That means all the energy from one ball is going to be transferred into the next ball. All right, I'm going to click OK, and that takes care of our contacts and our gravity. So everything's ready to go. Before we go ahead and calculate this out, I'm going to come over here to the little wheel, Emotion Study Properties, and I'm going to change the frames per second. Ironically, 25 frames per second is not enough to do this calculation. And we're going to raise this up pretty high in order for it to work uh, properly. Um, I've tried a variety of different numbers and they really need to get about above 700 plus frames per second for the math to really calculate out right. So let's go ahead and use a thousand for this example. In addition to that, I want to scroll down a little bit and go into my advanced properties, advanced options, excuse me. And I want to change the integrator type from GSTIFF to SI2. Now this is a little different uh, mathematical calculations that are going to be taking place, um, and it seems to work the best in this example. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK on that. And then OK the green box up here. All right, we'll go ahead and go to a side view. And I'm going to replace my key right here in orientation and camera. So replace that so the side view is what is calculated for this. All right, from here, we'll go ahead and let the calculations run. And it's going to act a little slow. We're shooting a lot of frames per second but we are going to get the intended results that we were expecting. I'll talk about some of the nuances and things that you can experiment with and, and do this. So right now we have a perfect example. And uh, in real life, it's, it's not quite perfect. We have some frictional values to deal with and we don't pass 100% of the energy. So there are some modifications we can make to make this more realistic. I'm also going to show you here, once this is done calculating, um, a few other little tiny things uh, that you could give an experiment with. Um, in this example, we used a 3D contact. Um, normally, I like to do a 2D curve contact with this, and uh, we could have done that with it. It really doesn't vary the results, so, but I will show you how you could do that. It does add a little more time because we have to do each one separate. We can't do them in a group. And then we have to edit the properties individually. But uh, it's not the worst thing in the world. Okay, it's almost done calculating. Again, we, we did four seconds at 1,000 frames. So we did 4,000 shots of mathematics that were taking place to make this function work. And we got ourselves a real good model here. And once it's done, it'll run uh, nicely afterwards. All right, we got a little fluctuation there. You can see the ball separated apart, but really not too bad uh, to get us through this video. Okay, so let's just see it play in real time. So I brought the, the timer back to the beginning and we'll just go ahead and run it. And you can see it runs like it normally would there. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this and you give it a try. Um, let's just spend a few minutes and we'll talk about a few of the things I mentioned. Um, so if you see right here, you see a little sketch line. 
and that sketch line is back here in my ball part and it's sketch six and I just projected the sphere out there to the edge and what that is is that should be in, in a coplanar with the rest of the balls and we would use that as a contact and this is something we would do in other packages like inventor and whatnot and uh, make it work um, in order to use a 2d contact so back over here to the motion study i'm just going to go ahead and suppress this solid body one and we'll just rotate the model a little bit and i could come in here with a contact and switch to curves and then pick the curves that i want to interact with one another again my choices here would be turn material and friction off change to restitution and set that to a value of one and then i would have to repeat that for all of them going down the line so that is an option and we can do that um, but this solid body one is a little better here of a choice for us um, other than that you can let's go ahead and suppress this one and turn our solid body back on okay and we'll go ahead and edit that now i've been messing with this for a few hours and i haven't i don't feel confident enough that i've gotten the values that i'm looking for but where i would take this next is my restitution value i would want to set that to about 0.95 to 0.97 that means we're going to lose a little bit of energy as the balls strike each other um, in addition to that i want to set some frictional values but uh, i want to work through that and I'll, I'll post back a video on once i get this all kind of worked out now we have two frictional values in SOLIDWORKS. We have our static, our static friction and our velocity friction. And uh, our static friction should always be more than our velocity friction in most cases, but we need to try and get those numbers just right. So far with the experiments I've been doing, generally they make my results uh, invalid and I get some weird uh, movements with uh, several of the balls as they pass through after the first hit. So I'll keep working on that and I'll, I'll post that uh, once I find what I'm looking for there for it. Well, I hope you enjoyed uh, this video and you give it a try. Uh, it's a great, great experiment and gets you moving forward in, in simulation and, and SOLIDWORKS. And uh, it has a great little outcome with a minimal amount of work. Um, as always, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We'll be posting plenty of these videos uh, to help push uh, the skills in a variety of different CAD software. And if you have an idea for our next uh, video, please leave it in the comments and uh, we'll be happy to go ahead and make that and get it posted for you. As always, good luck and uh, I hope you're successful with this venture.